when you really have encountered, things change. Victory is mine before my eyes can see. You need a new birth experience. Now there's nothing that can keep me from my promise. Set apart to God. Direct access. What's up, everybody? Hope you're doing well. I'm James Lebeck, and I want to welcome you to Breaking Through with James Lebeck. Look, I believe today is your day for a breakthrough. I want to talk to you today for a few moments about the curse of convenience. Think about that, the curse of convenience. You know, I'm not, I'm not that old. Come on, I love all my wise folks here, the golden folks. But I got to tell you, there was a day... If we were walking down the street of New York City, you would see, I know it's crazy, a paper boy. And if he was explaining the news to you, he probably would like hold a paper on the side of the street, you know, and say, extra, extra, read all about it. And, and to be honest with you, it's crazy to think about that today, but that's how we would get news. Think about it. We're talking like not that long ago. If, if somebody was on the side of the road, they might tell you, you know, uh, uh, a tragedy, right? JFK was assassinated or whatever. And you would find these things out for the first time. And that actually is how news transferred to you. This is wild. I grew up, my mom always and still does read the newspaper. Come on, how many of my paper readers out there? I got to break it to you. I would never want to read the newspaper. My, you know why? Because the information's old by the time I get it. Sure, sometimes I'll buy a, a Sports Illustrator or something because it's an article and I just want to hear about the in-depth writing. But let's be real, friends. Information today is being passed faster than it has ever in history. If something would happen right now, even during this broadcast, you wouldn't, even want to, you wouldn't have to wait to find out about it tonight. You would get it on your phone. We would get an alert. Information is traveling faster than it ever has. Let's talk about food, right? Come on. Years ago, you know, we'd have to order food, or there'd be rare few places that deliver, right? Now you have Uber Eats. You have all these companies that will just bring you food anywhere you want. Life has gotten crazy convenient. Look, Amazon's talking about robots. I mean, we're literally in a moment where things are, are happening so fast, right? Uh, you know, now, if something's delivered in two days, we're like, oh, man, we got to wait for it, you know? I mean, think about this. A, a drive through getting your coffee in a drive through now is like, takes too long. I mean, think about the day we live in. Uh, friends of mine have doctors, and they do telemedicine now. The thing is, everything's happening so fast today, but I have to tell you, uh, we may like the convenience of life, right? I mean, it's a lot of things. We can't have our Christianity that way. And what's happening is, although we have great convenience around us, right? I mean, everything's fast. Uh, uh, even phones, you know, a lot of people may have answering machines. Man, we don't have those things anymore. Think about this. There was a day, if you wanted to get a hold of me, you would call my house. And if I wasn't home, you would leave me a mess. Well, who's checking that and what are we doing it for? And the reality is, today, that would be ancient. If I need to get a hold of you, I'm going to send a text message. And even then, we get impatient if we don't get it back. What has all this done, right? It made life a little more convenient, made things a little more faster. But you know what it's done? It's produced a lot of spiritually impatient people. I like to say you can't have a microwave Christianity in a crockpot world, right? When God wants to do things in our lives, I hate to say the word, but it's process, right? There's things you can't do. There's seeds that God wants to plant and he's waiting for faithfulness. And the wonderful thing about the father is he's perfecting his plan through your life. 
We get frustrated. We get impatient. We get, you know, full of anger and fear. And it's like, you know, God isn't meeting our timeline yesterday. We just get, we allow that frustration to set in. And I'm telling you today, enjoy the convenience around you or not. But when it comes to the things of the Father, we have got to be so sure that he has, it's far better than what we could ever imagine, right? God is faithful. This earth may not be that faithful, but the Father is faithful. And what happens, you know, the Bible says that hope deferred makes the heart sick. There are a lot of people I know that are frustrated. And maybe God has promised something to you and it hadn't come past yet, right? Maybe there's some things that you are holding on to that you're waiting for God to do. Listen, don't grow weary in doing well, the Bible says. In a due season, we are all ready and prepared for that due season. We may not know when it happens. We may not know what it looks like, but God knows exactly what that season's gonna look like. And hope deferred, meaning things that we don't understand when it's deferred, our heart can get troubled over it, right? Come on. I knew somebody years ago. She was a spiritual mom in my life. Her name was Georgiana. Georgiana at five, she was filled with the Holy Ghost. At 11, her dad was a, you know, Ukrainian preacher. At 11, uh, she saw her husband in a vision. She knew what he would look like. She knew, uh, you know, just everything about him. And she told her mother at 11 years old, mommy, this is what the Lord showed me my husband. Can you imagine if I live my look, if I had an 11 year old and, and, and she was like, look, I know my husband is, I'd like have to, I don't know. Uh, I'd be like, you're crazy. You know what I mean? But this, this woman of God knew. And let me tell you what happened in her twenties. When guys would want to date her, she would go, nope, you're not the one. When she was in her 30s, come on now. And people are getting married and she's wondering, did she even hear from God? She still didn't date if he wasn't the right one. The 40s, her, she lived her 40s single and then most of her 50s. But yet she had a promise from God as a little girl that he was going to break through and her husband was coming. What do you do? She held on. She waited. She knew that this wasn't... Amazon Prime, right? She knew that this was God's word over her life. And guess what? The day that this amazing man of God, Ray, opened, came into her life, she knew that he was the one. And I'm going to tell you, it was greater than she could have ever had. It was better than if she got married in her 20s. What am I talking about? We get the hope deferred. We get so sick over the promises not happening. And the fast-paced world we live in only produce, makes it worse. Because, you know, heaven is an Amazon Prime, right? You're not going to get overnight delivery on the promises of God. It's the seed of faithfulness that you and I, look, all he's giving you is the seed of promise. We give him the fertilizer of faithfulness. He tells you, here's what I want over you. Here's what my word says over you. Here's my desire for you. Then what do we do with it? What did Mary do? Be it unto me according to your will. I don't get it, but I get it. And we all have a list. You're watching today. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. We all have a list of things that haven't happened yet. We all have a list of things that we wish were a little better. Maybe, maybe God could have met me on that timeline. Maybe your husband hasn't come, right? Maybe there's promises in your life that haven't come to pass. I'm telling you today, God has not forgotten you. Every word that he has spoken over your life will come to pass. We cannot grow weary in doing well. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But guess what else the Bible says? When desire is realized. It's powerful. That's the place of faith. When desire is realized, you know what it produces? A tree of life. And so I'm going to tell you today, stop focusing on what isn't happening in your life. Start focusing on what is happening. Stop focusing on the promises that maybe you're still waiting for. Because let me tell you right now, we all have a list, ladies and gentlemen. We all have a list of promises that haven't happened yet that we're waiting for, we're believing for, but we cannot grow weary in well-doing. Desire realized. What does that mean? I'm going to focus on what I know to be true. I'm going to focus on what he has told me. Maybe you're 40, 50, and maybe the, the man of God you saw you're going to marry at 11 hadn't happened. Well, guess what? Lord, I thank you for the desire you gave me. I thank you for what you said was true. And when we stand on that place of faith, then we can, the Bible says when desire is realized, it becomes a tree of life. And that's where we need to stay. 
so many people today, they're, they're spokesmen for barrenness, right? Whatever hasn't happened in your life, you can't let go of, you can't, you can't get your mind off. You know, I had a guy, he was single. Uh, come on, maybe some of y'all need this today. I had a guy, a friend of mine, he was single. You, can I tell you what was irritating? Every single time we talked about something, it went back to his lack of a wife. I could literally be on my deck going, man, I enjoy this sunny day. And he would be like, well, I wish I had a wife to enjoy the sunny day with. I mean, everything came back to how empty he was because he was alone. And I'm like, yo, you're going to be alone for a long time at this rate. If you get your eyes off your singleness and say, God, make me ready to be the man of God. Make me ready to be the woman that I need to be. Then all of a sudden we're going to do that desires there, right? Mama Georgiana didn't spend all her life complaining and moping and looking at her other friends side eyed because they got married and she didn't know. She stood on the promise. God, you told me here's what he looked like. I thank you that he's coming. You told me that here's what's going to happen. I thank you for the promise. And that's the difference. In this crazy world we live in, where everything's fast-paced and everybody's frustrated, your Christianity will not be overnight delivery. The promises are meant to be stood on, contended for, believed, read about, consumed. That's why the Word of God is necessary every single day of your life, not just when you feel like it. Because we need those promises and those seeds to dig deep on the inside of us. Here's something I think will encourage you. The Bible says, whatever is noble, whatever is trustworthy, think on these things. You know what that means? That means at any given moment, you're going to have a lot of reasons to be frustrated. But there have been times in my life, I've been in the car with my wife, things have been difficult, you know, maybe uh, uh, ministry pressure, maybe all the things we've, and I remember at times I've said, you know what, whatever is noble, let's just hold, let's just stand in agreement right now that we just got to pick something. You know what I mean? Like there, maybe it's just your breathing today. Maybe it's just that you, you get the broadcast in your home and the presence of God can invade you right now. Whatever it is, God wants to meet with you today. And I'm here to tell you that we just have to declare what he said is true. Whatever's noble. That means that what you're facing right now, maybe what hasn't happened in your life, think of whatever. Whatever is noble. It may be, Father, you died on the cross. Thank God I can live forever. Come, that's a great thing to be excited about. We all have that access. Yes, but it's what we focus on and what we do in the face of, you know, the delivery, right? In the face of here's the package, God's mailing it right to you. And if it doesn't come fast enough, it's what we do in the meantime of that promise that's going to matter. And look, as for me and my house, man, we're going to stand on the promises. We're going to believe God at his word. We're going to know that every word he has promised will come to pass. And we will not, the Bible says, don't grow weary and well-doing. We are not going to grow weary. Because in this crazy convenient, we don't want our Christianity convenient. There are things you're going to have to pray over. There's promises you're going to have to war for. There's grandchildren you need to call back into the kingdom. Come on, somebody. We're not looking for a fast food drive through Christianity. It doesn't exist. Come on. What does it cost? It costs everything. We are not going to have a Pentecost at no cost. We're going to believe God in his word and stand on his promises. There's something that I've seen happen in this convenient Christianity. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's really mind-blowing. And I believe that it has produced one of the biggest challenges today in Christianity. And this challenge, I don't believe existed as crazy before. Coming up next, I'm going to explain to you what the biggest challenge is. Don't go anywhere. I believe today, we're going to pray for you at the end of this broadcast. I believe the Father is going to touch you and your life is going to be changed forever. Tune in. We love you. And thank you for rocking with Breaking Through. Are you ready to ignite your faith? Then look no further than Pastor James Levesque's new book, Fire, preparing for an end time outpouring. This book contains 12 principles that will unlock the power within and cause you to walk in a new level of boldness and power. For a suggested donation of only $12.99, we will send you a personal autograph copy. Log on to jameslevac.org and get your copy today. Welcome back, everyone. We're talking today about the curse of convenience, right? We live in such a convenient day today. Everything's fast. Information's fast. Everything's coming at us faster than it really has ever. I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing, but it is a bad thing when it translates to our Christianity. Because a broken commitment to the Lord is going to be 
really the, the tragedy of a, a generation of any age that is looking for a convenient Christianity, right? There's some things that take, you know, Genesis says all that is in the earth, right? Seed time and harvest. If you've ever planted, which I have it, but I'll talk like I have. If you've ever planted, you know, my mom does. Matter of fact, my mother, uh, she's, she's retired and she is like, just, she lives for this garden. And my mom could tell me I planted this seed and about this week it's going to come up. I mean, can you imagine that? But my point is there's season and there's a season in life, right? Everything that you're stepping into right now, God has prepared you for. And what he has for you in the future, you're preparing for that right now. So we can't expect, you know, a 40-year prophecy to come to pass in four minutes. It doesn't work like that. But I want to talk to you today about the number one, really one of the issues that I see, one of the challenges in Christianity today, and I believe that it's forgetting our mission, right? When everything is happening so fast, think about this, church, church. Let me go back to Mama Georgiana. That woman was raised by the Lord. I mean, her father was Holy Ghost. She was raised in church. That girl honored the gathering of the saints. Today, a lot of people don't value church. I'm going to tell you, stay at home church is not the same as church. Being in person, experiencing God. Man, there's nothing like it. And we've lost that value. And my point is when we live in convenience, convenience I'm thankful for, the broadcast is getting to you. I thank God for those convenience. But there's also some tragedy because a lot of people today, you know when storms come, people get confused on what's going on, right? What is the Lord saying? What's going on? I'm so confused. Well, we know who the author of the confusion is, and that's the devil himself. But when, when, there's, when there seems to be what appears to be confusion, because there's not, or frustration or whatever, or trauma or trials, we have to remember the mission. And that's one of the things I see lost in this, I just want it now, mentality. There was a movie called Saving Private Ryan. <clears throat> it was a powerful movie. Um, it was pretty graphic because it was really depicting World War II, right? And there was a moment of like when they invaded the beaches in Normandy. There's a scene in the movie. It's really a powerful scene. And they're all prepared on the boats, right? And some of them are doing their little Catholic prayers. And, but they've all been prepared for this. They didn't quite know what's going to happen. And, and in the movie, as they approached the beach, man, they were met, as you know, if you know anything about history, they were met with gunfire. <clears throat> they were met with, you know, uh, an opposition immediately. <clears throat> there were people in the boats. In the movie, it was graphic. Some were getting, you know, getting killed and people were losing limbs and there was blood everywhere in the water and it was one of the most graphic scenes. But something happened. <clears throat> when they all began to advance the beach, confusion fell on everybody. And there's a moment in there where they're getting like shell-shocked, you know, they're getting rattled by bullets and, and it's, it's, a, it's an intense scene. A guy's like picking up an arm. I mean, this is so intense that people actually lived through this. And there's a moment in this movie where they go on the beach, bodies are everywhere, blood is everywhere, and he looks over to his, you know, to Tom Hanks, who's like, whatever, the commander, and he says, what do we do now? He says, what do we do now? What do you mean, what do we do now? Nothing's changed because there's been some casualties. Nothing's changed because we feel a little persecution. What do you mean? What do we do? And, and, and he looked over and he goes, what do you mean? He says, where's the meeting point? And he said, anywhere but here. Meaning we came off this boat. We were prepared for such a time as this. God has empowered us to do great things, right? Lean it over to your life right now. What, we're not letting anything going on in the world to stop us from what we're here to do. Oh, James, it's been a year like none other. It's been frustrating. What am I supposed to do? What we've always done, ladies and gentlemen, heal the sick, preach the gospel, give, trust God, right? Be a witness, be a light. Just do all the things that God's told us to do because here's the thing. Despite what you may feel, Despite what's going on around us, right? Despite what's going on in politics and who be this president, what's going on here and what's going on with this sickness. Man, hogwash. Here's what the Bible says. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, it says this. You are, you are, say I am. You are the light of the world. Oh my goodness, think 
you about that. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. I'm not telling you that you're the light of your street. I'm not telling you that you're the light of, you know, your job, although all those things are true. I'm telling you when he put a light in you, he said, I'm the light of the world. Come on. Man, praise God that in, well, I don't feel like the light of the world. Well, that is who you are. We're not, faith's not going by feeling. What has the Father said about you? If you and I are called to be a light in this world, then it's about time we shine. Come on. The light of this earth isn't looking at who's going to get elected. The light of this world isn't looking at what's going on in my income. The light of the earth says, God, you put in me your Holy Spirit. You've made me powerful for such a time as this. Another scripture, Romans 8, I love this verse. Romans 8, verse 11 says this, but if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, come on, who, listen, the Holy Spirit lives in you, the same spirit. Now, we're not talking about a Canal Street knockoff. We're not talking about something fake. We're talking about the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in you and lives in me. We are qualified. We are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb. We are victory uh, believers. Come on, we're miracle workers. We are awakening on two feet. Come on, somebody. And that is how we cannot forget the mission. We can't forget the mandate and why we're here. Because here's what happens. I see people forget all the time who they are. I'm going to tell you a crazy story. <clears throat> when we purchased our property in, uh, in Connecticut, we have an amazing church building. Uh, there were a lot of different groups in the building, right? There was like NA and AA and drug groups and rehabs and all this stuff. Well, something happened at the same time. There was a bad batch of heroin that came into our city and people were dying. But at the same time, these groups weren't paying rent to the church. Everybody's always trying to take advantage of the body of Christ. I got upset. I felt like I was back on the city block. I came to these groups. I said, look, you're going to pay up or you're going to be out of the building. I love you. I've extended grace to you. Every time you said you were going to pay, you didn't. Dude, it might be the end for you. And you know what happened? I actually did. I had to kick a lot of them out of the church. They weren't paying. You know, it's a lot of money to heat that big sanctuary. They weren't paying and we kicked them out. And guess what happened? At the same time people were dying, they were trying to blame me for these deaths. They wanted to do a big press conference. So I'm like, fine. Well, first they wanted me to respond. I have nothing to respond about. Then they said, well, we're doing an article for the paper about, you know, uh, what is the role of clergy in this current epidemic we have? I said, fine, we'll talk. I had it, everybody came because they wanted to really ask me why I kicked these people out. And I sat down with them in my office. I'll never forget. They all looked at me and I opened up and I said, guys, I'm doing a press conference. Literally, like I have to explain why I did this. I said, everyone, I have to explain something to you. I said, first of all, from the bottom of my heart, I want to apologize to you. I want to apologize because I've misled you. We are not an NA group. Well, I bless all of them. We're not an AA group. Who we are? We are a church. We believe that freedom only comes from one person, and his name is Jesus. Don't mistake me for some country club. Don't mistake me for some community outreach. We are a church, and unlike these groups, we have a 100% success rate. I was on heroin at 14. I'll never go back. My worship pastor was on cocaine. He'll never go back. You want real freedom? You only find it through Christ. And I'm sorry that in the process of being a blessing to the community, you were confused at the mission. It's about time we act like Christians. It's about time that you become the church and you start getting bold and start being serious about the things of God. And here's what I said. I said, you want to bring them to my conferences? They could come sit on the front row. I'll give them a, I'll give them a front row seat to the conferences. And then what I'll do is I'll pray for it. Every single one of them that need a touch from God. And I guarantee you that the power of the Holy Ghost will set them free. Bold claims, not if you're a person of faith. And so I want to remind you the mission hasn't changed. When I look upon the horizon of the earth today, even the nations of the earth, I see a great awakening coming. When I look at the darkness, the Bible says redeem the time. I see a great light coming. There is not a darkness on this earth that the light inside of you wouldn't break through. 
All we're waiting is for believers to believe. All we're waiting is for people to say yes and realize that no weapon formed against you will prosper, that God has equipped you for such a time as this, that he has filled you. Why did he die on the cross? Not that we would just escape this place and go to heaven, and he didn't die on the cross, that you would be a permanent fixture in church like a piece of wood. He died on the cross so we would live an overcoming life. John 10, 10 said, I have come that you would have life and life more abundant. I want to pray for all of you today watching because I believe that God has sent me here to see a great day of breakthrough upon you. I believe that as you're watching this broadcast, the Holy Spirit's going to invade your homes. I believe that a fresh touch from heaven is going to come on your life. It is time to focus. It is time to lay down all the things that are holding us back from what God has for us. So if you're watching today and you're a believer, I want to pray for you. Stretch your hands towards the screen with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, every person watching, I thank you that you are a miracle worker, that your power is going forth on this earth and that the light of God would rise within us today. God, I pray that a fresh touch from heaven would begin to fall in every home. I release that fire now in the name of Jesus on everybody watching. And let me just say this. You may be watching this right now. Maybe you're just flipping through the channels, don't even know why. I know why. God has a divine appointment for you right now. You may be like, man, I don't know the Lord. I'm going to ask you a question. If you were dying today, do you know that you're going to heaven? God touched my life on August 25th of 95. I was a teenager. I was frustrated, and I cried out to God. And I said, God, if you're real, reveal yourself to me, man. And he, man, he rocked my life. I got delivered instantly. I never went back to the things of the world. And today's your day. Today's your day to receive. It only comes by faith. The Bible says we write these things that you may know you have eternal life. It's possible. I know. Do you know? If you don't know, I want you to pray with me. It is actually that simple. And God will invade your life and begin something afresh. You can't live another year the way you've been living this year. You don't know for certain where you're going to go when you die. Well, let's take care of that right now. Bow your head with me. Close your eyes and just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me, cleanse me, fill me. Come on. I thank you for dying and I receive salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on. I know it's crazy. It is actually that simple. Find, keep following the broadcast. Find a Bible-believing church. Keep praying every day. Start a new relationship with God. It's actually that simple. Look, all of you watching, I want to thank you for being a part of the broadcast. I believe today something shifted on the inside of you, and I'm so thankful you'll be with us. Signing off, thank you for rocking with Breaking Through. everybody, we want to thank you for tuning in to Breaking Through with James Levesque. We want to invite you to join Pastor James this Sunday at both our Engaging Heaven Church Connecticut locations, 9am in West Haven, Connecticut and 11am in New London, Connecticut. We are a presence-driven church with powerful worship and kids' church for all ages. Join us and get ready to have your faith ignited. Are you ready to ignite your faith? Then look no further than Pastor James Levesque's new book, Fire, preparing for an end time outpouring. This book contains 12 principles that will unlock the power within and cause you to walk in a new level of boldness and power. For a suggested donation of only $12.99, we will send you a personal autograph copy. Log on to jameslevesque.org and get your copy today.